Hello and welcome. This is Knack. We're going to be working on a sheath today for this knife. This is one I recently completed. Let's see, it's kind of a cool knife. Interesting blade shape. It's more of a fantasy blade than anything else. But that's what we do here at the Phoenix Fantasy Forge, right? Um, the handle here, you've got uh, a black palm scale. This is African black wood on the end end here. Um, and then this ivory band is actually not ivory. It is called Tagua Nut. We use brass. And if you get close, you can see that we've got some brass pinstriping between the sections of the blade there. Looks pretty good. Full tang blade, as usual. We're going to make a sheath for this. And I've got a plan for that right here. That's what it's going to look like, except for this section right here that's a little bit bigger, or smaller, I guess. That is going to have some tooling on it. And I've planned that out. I just don't have the sheet with me, but I'll, uh, you guys will see it during the video. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And we'll see you guys at the end. All right, so we're getting started here. We've got the pieces cut out. You saw I've cut them out of the out of the stock. Got a big side of tooling leather there. It's good eight to nine ounce leather. Nice and thick, nice and hard. And yeah, I don't I don't cut it with a knife to the shape that I want. I do it on a grinder. 
of all things, a little belt grinder, as you can see here. I just like it better. It allows me to get the exact shape that I want, get the curves in that I want, without running the risk of messing it up with the with the knife, cutting off, off the center or something, crossing the line, if you will. It's a problem I've always had. And this solves it for me. What can I say? But, uh, we're going to be stacking. You, you notice that I cut out four pieces approximately that size, this this piece that I'm working on right now. Uh, there's, there's four of them. One of them will be the top piece, and three of them will go underneath the blade. They're going to be stacked together, and then they stack onto the to the largest piece. And then obviously we've got that thinner piece that will be the spacer. I think we'll get to that one here in just a few moments. We'll get some more music here and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so we've got these pieces cut out very nicely. Now, I want to mention that they're not final shape, even though it looks like I've done a lot of work to get them to be. Um, but they're not final shape. I left myself around a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch around the edges. Uh, these pieces need to be worked together. No matter how good you are at cutting leather, they're never going to meet up perfectly. And uh, so I always work them together, especially when I'm stacking them this thick. I mean, this is, geez, let's see, five, six, that's six total layers of leather for this particular sheath. So get these three parts glued together, and then we'll glue that little spacer on. That's where the blade's going to go. You can see the spacer sitting there off into the center of the screen. Two of them glued, the third one glued there. Yes, I use my elbow to make sure there's no bubbles. <laughs> Making sure that this uh, piece is going to work. Needed to be ground off just a little bit at the tip top there. Because the blade is actually going to sit right on it. There we go. That looks great. And I'm just using, a, it's basically a rubber cement. It's, it's Tanner's glue or whatever you call it. Uh, I get it from Tandy Leather Factory, and it's it's really nice stuff. You don't necessarily need to do both pieces, which you can see that I didn't. But if you do stick pieces together where, where you've only put glue on one side, you'll want to uh, not let it dry completely because uh, then it, it loses enough tack where you're not going to be able to get it done. Now that side that I'm sanding here, we're taking this over the little slack sander. This side is, we have to finish it before we put these pieces on with the other, uh, with the other parts of the sheath. Uh, because it's going to be impossible to sand once it's connected to the rest of the sheath. Um, it's kind of in the middle of the sheath. So, got to sand it to final sanding right now. We've got our gum tragacanth now that we've got it sanded out. Stir that stuff up, get some gum tragacanth on there. And that white slicking tool. <clears throat> We'll just get a nice smooth finish on there. And that looks really sharp. And we're going to be doing some more leather finishing things here. Uh, I'll play another song and then I'll be right back with you. <laughs> Thank you. 
now the middle piece of the sheath, as you can see, is dyed a nice coal black. We're going to be working on the top part. This piece lays directly on top of that black piece that's drying now. And you may have seen a couple pieces. Uh, I'm going to pull them out here in just a minute for sure. Uh, yeah, I already pulled them out. But uh, they're going to be kind of an inlay. It's made out of taguan nut, which is that ivory colored material. And some black, African black wood or whatever. And that stuff's really nice too. And a little bit of brass right in between. It's a tiny little pinstripe. You can barely see it on the video actually. So make sure you guys get a nice view of that once we get to the finished product. But um, yeah, so what I'm going to be doing is uh, I'm going to leave kind of an untooled section band, as you can see there, that's going to go behind the, the uh, claw shape or tooth shaped inlay that we've made. You can see that I'm just going to do a random pattern type thing, and I'm actually quite fast at it. Looks like a little jackhammer there, but getting it tooled out, making sure that all of that, all of those spots are tooled in. There's not even a tiny little spot that's missing. It's all been tooled there, and we'll make sure that the other side gets the same treatment. Works great. And then the next step is going to be to cut out the spot for the claw to sit. I guess it's going to be a tooth. But uh, yeah, it's got to have a little slot to slide in there. We'll glue it in nice and tight. But um, there's the tooth pieces. And we're going to get start cutting that out. And then we'll dye it black. And I actually have to mention that the... I know I've already lost it. The, the video part right after this segment where I was supposed to be dyeing that, that particular piece black, it got lost. So I apologize for that. We're gonna. It's going to be skipping to the finished product essentially there at least for that particular piece here in just a little bit but we'll get some more music and i'll be right back with you There you go, you get to see the second coat of black going on that particular piece and the back had not been dyed yet, so that's what it looks like dyeing that piece. So lucky you. Getting it nice and black, and we're going to get that stuff set up. You can see the hole looks pretty nice actually. I got some Kydex, but it was the wrong color. It, was, it turned out to be a pattern on there. We've got to have black Kydex. Now notice that I'm going to put the shiny side up against the bottom of the leather here. I don't know. Kind of in retrospect, I kind of wish that I hadn't. I almost should have put the shiny part on the back of the sheath, but uh, I use Kydex to stiffen up my uh, my sheaths. And I'll tell you, it is phenomenal. It's a great combination, leather and Kydex. Nice and stiff sheaths, and they are stinking indestructible. So we're going to glue this piece on there. I just sanded it a little bit to make sure that that glue sticks just a little bit better and use a really thin coat when you're going to do uh, plastic to 
you know, to leather. It's Kydex, Kydex, whatever. It's kind of like plastic, close enough anyway. But yeah, I made sure to get really thin coats of glue on these two pieces, so that will be nice. And then we'll get that dyed up. And there's a couple other things here coming up. Uh, it's going to go fairly quickly. The clips are kind of short. Um, they require a little bit of explanation. We did some tool building actually, but right now we're just going to sand that down to the shape that it needs to be with that leather. And see that, especially up at the top part of the sheath, it's going to be very stiff. Only one section of leather there, except for the belt loop, which will go on the back, but it needs that rigidity, I think, and uh, Kydex is quite light, quite thin, quite rigid, and uh, it, it makes a nice product, so that piece is going to look really sharp together. I'm going to hit, go ahead and get that dyed up here in just a minute. And we also need to put in our first snap, the base. And that's going to go on that piece that we're working right there. And I, I did this the first time I've done this, but I'm going to use a copper rivet to put the base of the snap in instead of the rivet that comes with it. Oh, and here's the tool building. Uh, because of that, I needed to build a tool that would allow me to set the, the copper rivet inside the snap because the snap is has got sides around it. So I need something that would go down in there and the, the setting tool that comes with those copper rivets is too big, it's much too large. So this is gonna be able to do it. I put that on a nice, just a small anvil and I shake the table up real good here. But it sets very, very well. Those copper rivets are absolutely amazing. Um, it, it doesn't quite go with our motif, but the copper is only shows on the back essentially. So <clears throat> all in all, I think it's that's gonna turn out just fine. And then I um, made kind of a, a peening tool to get in there as well, make sure that it's it's going to stay nice and tight. And that way we can get through both the layer of the kydex and the layer of that leather. And I missed a little bit there where I was dyeing that piece black and it getting all dyed black now. And the next thing we're going to do is attach the top piece to the middle section here. And uh, you can see we're getting the glue on there right now. looks really good and then there's going to be some we have to work those pieces together around the edges just or not well you'll see where I'm working them right here but uh, right where they connect to the outside edge uh, you just got to work them together make sure that those pieces are going to be nice and flush nice and smooth and um, and there's no cracks or anything between the leather and that, that's the big key there that, the sheath is actually quite nice, I think, at this point. It just needs something to help you hold the blade in, and that's what the strap and snap is going to be able to do. But essentially, that's the sheath right there. That piece covers the entire cutting edge. <clears throat> and that gets us ready for more assembly. Get it all sanded up. We're going to start gluing this uh, the pieces together. And then it's uh, it's going to be a lot of back and forth, a lot of clips here and there. I'm going to play some music for a moment, and I'll be right back with you.
And so we've got all these uh, pieces put together now. Back to back to the drill press. We're gonna drill some holes. I do this with a drill press because obviously with this many layers, it's quite thick. I'm trying to punch through it with a punch it is a little bit difficult, aside from impossible. Plus the Kydex layer on the back, it's difficult to punch through. So especially without cracking it. Drill press is my favorite way to get holes in. We'll get those drilled up. And then the next step is going to be sewing. Now, <laughs> sewing does take a while, and I, I do it on my couch instead of in the shop. It's a lot more comfortable. That way I can watch a movie and sew at the same time. And I didn't give you all of the sewing in this particular video. I only did about half of it on camera. And the rest of it, uh, you just have to assume that I did it myself. But uh, we'll put some more music on and I'll be back with you here fairly shortly for a couple extra steps before this sheet is complete. Final coat of black finish is on the sheath itself. We still haven't attached the belt loop as you can see on the back there. We're fitting the snap to the strap, which is always fun. On this one, we didn't use the copper rivet for obvious reasons. We didn't want that to show on the front of the sheath. So we're just going to be using a standard brass snap top part it does fit in there touch that up just a little bit with some black 
and we're going to put the uh, sheen on, the finish. This makes it nice and shiny. This is really a great product. It's called Ultra Sheen. Nice and shiny, makes the, uh, really makes the leather uh, slick too, which is, is quite nice. This looks good. You can see some of that black rubbing off onto the uh, dauber there. But regardless, uh, I think we're getting pretty close to a good finished product. Next thing we're going to do is go ahead and install our tooth into the sheath, to that nice little slot. We're just going to glue it in with the Tanner's Bond. You know, I mean, there's probably more permanent ways to put it in. I guess I could probably use a tougher glue, like epoxy or something. But when it comes down to it, this particular piece does not make the sheath any more, or less for that matter, a functional. So we just glue it in. If somebody's going to use this knife heavily, take it out in the woods all the time, they can expect for this inlay to probably come off eventually. We just had to grind it down just a little bit. It looks like it had the uh, white part there, the taguan nut, part of the inlay that was just a little bit um, stretched or warped for whatever reason. It's looking pretty sharp now. The last thing we've got to do is install the belt loop. Now I'm doing that last because I want to see exactly how I want it on my hip. So I set it up first. Now we're just going to get that cut out. I got some scrap leather here. And this is actually uh, not the same leather. It's what you call shield or armor leather. It's 12, 13 ounce leather. It's super thick. So we're going to make the belt loop out of that. And the reason I get the really thick stuff is because you'll see that I actually gouge it out on the machine so I can get this done with only one layer of leather, which is kind of a nice touch. But once we get it shaped the way that we want, then I'm going to gouge it out two inch belt loop slot. There you go. Put perfect two inches, two inch belts, make two inch slots if you do it that way. <coughs> Get this one dyed up in a nice solid black as well. I'll be right back with you at the end after we get this attached. Okay, well we've got it done. Sewed the uh, that back piece on. And that's the last bit. And now there's the final product. Looks pretty good. I think that knife uh, fits in there really well. Go ahead and try it on too. I'll put it on my belt. Off camera. kind of off camera. Nice tight belt loop. And there it goes. Pointed it forward just a little bit, made it point forward, but uh, yeah, that looks great. It comes out pretty easy. You don't have to pull it all the way out. All you have to do is pull that much out right there, and then it just pops right out. Great! All right, thanks for watching. Our next project, I think we're going to do... Um, I've already started it. Uh, we're going to be finishing up a another weapon, a non-knife weapon. Should be kind of fun. So check the channel out. Make sure you're watching for the next video. See you guys next time.